of those things. And because of what's getting ready to happen, I'm excited. If Jesus comes, I'm excited. If he don't come, I'm excited. It doesn't matter either way. But I'm excited. I mean, this is a spectacle that he's created in the sky that we get to see. I think the next one we'll get to see is 20 years from now. If we're here, he might not be here. I don't know. He is coming. I promise you he is coming. He is coming. That is a promise that he made. He is coming. So you can count on that. But I want you to be ready. And today I really want to focus on you being ready for his coming. We're going to release the kids here in a minute. But first what I want to do is break off the spirit of fear in the atmosphere. So Father, we come to you right now. We glorify you. We take all authority right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth who, who paid the ultimate price that we did not have to fear anymore. So, Father, we break that off right now across the room. We break every bit of fear off, every bit of anxiety. We break it off right now in Jesus' name. It has no place. It has no place. It has no place in your life, in your heart. We break it off right now in Jesus' name. Kids, come up here. Come on. Where are they all at? I think my last week crowd, like, bowed down on me. I don't know where they all (laughs) were. Love it. I'm so grateful that you guys are here today to support what God is doing here, supporting these children. This is the next presidents and secretaries of the state, the next musicians of the world. Father, we just thank you for our children, Lord. We just bless them right now. We just speak blessings over them. God, as they go forth and they learn something about you today, God, they walk out their identity in you, who you are who they are in you. We praise you for that. We glorify you, Lord. Bless them, bless them, bless them in Jesus' name. All right, get out of here. Anybody still afraid? Afraid not. Listen, it's exciting. I don't like having to have a mic, so we need to figure that out. But it's exciting um, as far as the handheld. It's exciting what we're getting ready to see. I mean, I'm I'm really excited to just watch that because they said not only will the the sun or the the moon block out the sun, but there's going to be several planets that are visible in that very moment. I mean, wow. I was outside this morning. Listen, 1.30 this morning I was out praying. I couldn't sleep, so I was like, I'm just going to go out and pray. And I went out and I saw, man, these stars are just everywhere. But I saw a bunch of red stars. It was really cool because I've never really seen them, but they were like lit up. And I'm like, God, what are those? What stars are those? So it made me want to get, now I want to get some kind of kind of a telescope or something to look and see if I can see if I can see him because I really am interested in the stars and I used to um, Shelly used to tease me because I used to go out and I would say to the stars I would say show my wife a shooting star and it would happen and, and, and she would like she would say who are you I'm like well God just just loves me and he just answers my prayers and so um so I I, I love the stars and I love what's getting ready to happen but um but I'm in love with him more I'm in love with Jesus more than, than, than all of creation. I'm in love with him more because he is the creator of all things. He's my restoration. He's my, he's my blessing. He's, he's my everything. And I want you to know this morning, my, the title of my message is Break Us or Take Us. Because depending on the source that we pull from in our life, we're either going to be taking away from God or breaking for, breaking for God. Depending on the source, some of you pull from a source out of your life that's, that you have God up here in the corner, but you have this main source that you pull from in your life. And when you pull from the source that's not supplying everything that you need, eventually those things are going to fade away and they're going to knock off. I mean, I want you to know that God is the only thing that will last forever, God in our souls. And it's dependent on where our souls will end up, in heaven or hell. It's a true place. Hell is real. Heaven is real. I've been to heaven, I've seen Jesus face to face, so I know that he's real, and I've been to hell, and I've seen what hell looks like. I haven't seen the devil, for say, face to face like I have Jesus, but but I know it's real. And my my thing today is what I want to do is encourage you to get in a place that you are grounded in the right source, that you're grounded in the right source. So, So how many of you like maps? How many of you like maps? Like anybody like maps, Rosen? I, I knew you would be one that likes maps. Rosen just likes anything with paper. 
She just loves reading from papers and, and give them, she sends me papers all the time. But I, I don't really care for maps that much, but my wife, um, she loves maps. Like she is like crazy. We go to other countries. She's all about the land, all about the mappage, all about all the layout of the land. And she loves that stuff. And when we travel, we travel quite a bit. And when we travel, if we have, you know, like when we go to California or something, if we have an Indiana map only, we're not going to be able to get very far knowing where we're going with just an Indiana map. But if we have a, a map like this, we'll know how to get from Indiana all the way to California, and we'll be able to map out the road that we have. But we can take that bright thing off now. But I want you to know that there's times when Shelly and I, when we're traveling, that because she's a navigator, she don't trust my GPS, which is the same exact GPS that she runs off of. So we've got both GPSs running at the same time, and they're lagged a little bit in their time, and mine's saying something, then hers is saying something. I'm like, can you shut your GPS? GPS off, and, and she never does. She just keeps it going and keeps it going, and um, uh, and I don't understand that because I don't. Uh, my mom, my wife thinks totally different than I do. When I've got the map on, when I've got the arrow, it's going the way I'm going. Like if I'm going this way, the arrow is going this way. Her arrow is going down, and it doesn't even make no sense to me. I'm like, why is your arrow going this way when we're going this way? She goes, that's just the way I read it. That's just the way I read it, and I'm like, man, that doesn't make sense. Turn that thing around. But we'll, I'll be over in this lane over here, and there'll be five lanes, and I'll be over here. And she's navigating, and I'm, I'm watching my GPS, and she's watching her GPS. But we'll be going, and, uh, and I just like get, I love the scenery. I love everything around me when we're driving. So I really don't pay attention. I listen to this thing, and, and I'm half deaf in one ear. I'm not claiming it, but it's just it's a diagnosis. And so, so I hear some of it, and some of it I don't. So I've missed a few turns down the road, I'll, I'll admit. I've, I've ended up in different states before when I was supposed to be in another state. Um, I'll admit that. But listen, she'll tell me last minute, like there's nothing going on around me, like there's no cars around me. I'll be five lanes over here, and she'll say, you need to turn when? Now. And i got to dart over into those other lanes to get off the exit I need to get off of. But I want you to know, when you're grounded in Christ, you won't have to do that. When you're grounded in Him, and He's the main thing in your life, you won't have to dart off last minute. He's going to lay it out for you, and you're going to be comfortably moving from lane to lane to lane to get to the place that you need to go to. I want to read this scripture this morning because, listen, God is, is this is this is the God that I want to follow. This is the God that, that I want to follow this morning because he has it all mapped out. And he's such a neat God. He's such an amazing God. So if you have your Bibles, turn to, um, we're in Colossians. Right, chapter 1, verse 13. I think they have it up here. Colossians 1, 13. It says, for he... For he rescued us from the, from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom he has redeemed a redemption, the forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, the God that you can't see. He is the first of all creation. For in him all things were created, both in heavens and in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, or all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. That's the God that I'm trying to get us to be on, in alignment with. Because I want you to know there's going to be things that happen in your life. There's going to be things that... that drastically happen in your life that will cause you to step away from God if God is not the center of your life. And I want to talk to you, and I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying this morning. Our wives and our husbands are valuable. Our jobs are valuable. Our hobbies are valuable, and they're fun to do. There's so many things in life that we have. The money that we make, it's valuable. The wealth that we have and the houses that we have, they're valuable to us. But they cannot be the main thing in our life. They can just cannot be the main thing. And some people put those as the main thing. So when you put those things as the main thing and God is secondary, what happens is when you are going through life, and going through a trial, because listen, God, the trials we go through will make us stronger. Every single time, the trials that we go through will make us stronger. I promise you that. I promise you they'll make you stronger. 
But if you're but but if you're putting God second and you put your wife or your husband first and they're even before God, one day one of them are gonna is gonna pass away. And some of you have already experienced that. Some of you in this service have experienced that already, that, that your husbands or your wives have gone before you. You can't be in a position where it destroys you to a place that moves you to destruction and the enemy, because that's what he wants to do. He wants to take those times when you've put everything else before God, and he wants to take those times, and that's when he's going to come in and create the most havoc, because that's when he's going to come in. When you open that door, he's going to come in to kill, steal, and destroy everything that God has for you. That's his job, and he's waiting, and he's waiting, he's watching you, and he sees it when you put other things before God. He sees it when you put all these other things before God. He sees it. And he knows, and he's watching you. When you put your finances before God, if you lose a job today, what would you do, right? Like, like if you just lost your job today and you didn't, what would you do? Would you trust in God with it? Most people wouldn't. Most people, if they lost their job today, they would be in freak out mode, not knowing what to do. Instead of having the peace of heaven, knowing that God's going to take care of them. God's going to make a way. God's going to provide. When you look back at your life, you'll see every time that something's happened in your life, how God made a way and how God provided. Every time. Every time. I'm serious. Look back. Think of a trial that you went through. Think of a trial that you went through. Every time you went through that trial, you look back and God was there. He brought you through it. But there's some people, I got to minister this week, and I don't think they're here this morning, two young men in the alley back here. I got to minister to them. And I went back, and I didn't know. I, was, I got a phone call. said they was back there uh, making drugs. So I thought, well, I probably ought to go check it out. And um, um, you know, that's the ex-cop in me, the bounty hunter. He just come in and get involved in some of this stuff. And I, and I pulled I rolled, I rolled up on them. And... Um, <laughs> But my intentions were just to, like, you know, tell them, hey, don't be, you know, making drugs back here. Go make them somewhere else because they're going to make them regardless. But, but as I got there and I, and, I, and I saw this one boy smile, and he just smiled at me. He said, he said sir, I'm sorry. He said, I'm cleaning up all this trash. He starts picking up trash, you know, because he had um, whiskey bottles that he'd been, drink, he'd been back here drinking. I seen him last week back there. And a uh, beautiful smile. And so I started talking to him about Jesus. I asked them about their life, and, 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 and they're both homeless. And, and, uh, and the one says, I just, want to, I just want to get out of here. I want to get out of Martinsville. I want to get out of the city. I, and I, he said, I think I might go to Indianapolis. I said, man, that's probably the worst place to go, you know, Indianapolis. Just stay in Martinsville, man. We, we'll help you. And, um, and he said, I just want out of this. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to get away from this lifestyle. I don't know how to get away from it. He says, I want to. I so want to in me. I just want to walk away from it, but I don't know how. I said, man, Jesus is the only way that you can get away from this. So I got out of my vehicle at this point, and now I'm, now I'm, now I'm, gonna, I'm praying with him. And I said, can I pray with you guys? And, and uh, the one said, I, I, don't, I don't touch. I don't hold, hold hands or nothing. So he let me put his hand on his shoulder, and I, the other one held my hand. And I'm just praying with them. I'm speaking life into them. I'm speaking idea to them, who God sees them at. I'm just speaking all this stuff into them, loving them, loving them, loving them. And they said, man, we, we didn't even realize that you would be like, we thought you were getting ready to, like, call the cops on us and run us out of here. I can't, they said, I can't believe that you just stopped and pray with us. And then the other one grabbed my hand. The one that said he didn't want to grab hands. Grabbed my hand. And they said, they said, listen, and I want you to know, they said, they, he said, I'm always, he said, I'm always nervous. He said, but when I grabbed your hand, he said, I feel so calm. Because the Jesus inside us will calm the storm. The Jesus inside us will calm every situation that we're going through. That's his job. Holy Spirit's job is to keep things calm and collective. When you lose your job or when a spouse goes before us, praise God that they got to make heaven and any pain in their life is gone But but and we miss them. But praise God that have, they made heaven their home. We have to look things in a joyous way. We can't always look at things with doom and gloom. Sometimes when you transfer to a new job or you change jobs, it's because God has a blessing for you. 
you might look at it as a tragedy in a moment, but God sees it as a blessing. And we need to roll with those blessings and just let him do what he wants to do in our life. If you're centered up with him. Now, if you're not centered up with him, my caution for you today is that you need to uproot yourself in a way. You know, some trees have roots that go deep and they have this deep um can't think of the name of the the main vine that goes down. The, then they got all these roots. And some trees just root all out. And they get real big all the way around, almost as massive as the tree itself that you see is underground, just exploding. But if none of the a tap root, but if none of those roots are rooted to Jesus, then eventually you're going to die with the tree. Eventually you're not going to make heaven. Because it's not rooted in Jesus. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no man can come to the Father except through me. That means Jesus is the only way. And if you don't believe in God this morning, I really don't know what to tell you other than believe in God because he is real. And it doesn't matter if you don't believe in him or not this morning. He is coming and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord Jesus. It just will happen. So if you're not rooted this morning in Jesus, solely in Jesus, if something comes your way and and your, your finances change, your job changes, your house situation changes, your vehicle changes, your spouse situation changes, and it breaks you to the point that you walk away from God. You need to uproot yourself and get rooted in Christ. This here is the ever-living Word of God. This is what you need to live by. Every decision you make needs to come from this. There are some things that you can just make automatically. There's some things that you can just know. And we don't have to pray about everything in life. You know, there's some things that we just do. We know it's right and you just do it. Some people do, though. The religious mindset, they pray about every single thing. It's like you don't have to pray. He already told you what to do. You don't have to pray about it. Just do it. There are things that you must pray about. There are things that you must do that line up with the Word of God. But this right here is your everything. If you get rooted in this right here, and how do you apply that? Every day you dig in the Word. Every day you ask God, show me something new in your Word. Show me something bright in your Word. Show me something I can put in my life, apply in my life, out of your Word. And He will do that. When the Holy Spirit tag-teamed Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, Jesus went up and he came down, that's his job is to teach us. And he does through the Word. But you have to activate it. You have to actually get the Word and open it up. That's part of your job. You have to actually get in a prayer closet or wherever you pray at and pray to him. You have to do your part. He's not going to come down and just pray for you. He's not going to come down and open it up and say, please, please, please read. No, it says he stands at this side of the door and he knocks. And anyone who opens the door, he'll come in and sup with them. But he's got no knob on his side and you have a knob on your side. You have to open the door on your side and let him in. You can't, you can't save the world by your thinking or by all the stuff that, that you, you've been through. You can't save the world. You have to save yourself first and then go out and save the world. You have to. You have to. Can I get an amen? LaShawn would say that. Can I, get a, can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? <laughs> so good. Turn your Bibles to uh, Ephesians. I think it's 3, 3, 13. Ephesians 3, 13. It says, Therefore I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulations on your behalf for they are glory when he died for us it was a glory it was a good thing for this reason I bow my knees before the father for whom every family in heaven and on earth derives is named from whom That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened in power through his spirit, the inner man, 
so that Christ may dwell, listen, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Faith is a big factor in your walk with God. And that you being rooted and grounded in love, love is a main factor in this root system. Love and faith. You may be able to comprehend with all the saints, with the breadth and the length and the height and depth, to know the love of Christ which surpasseth knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You know, when Jesus went to his own city, he could not heal very many people because their lack of faith. He wanted to. He went with all intentions to heal everyone in his own hometown. But because of their faith situation, not very many of them got touched or healed. Anybody read the story of Moses? Love the story. So there are 400 years in captivity. Moses becomes their leader. He comes in to take them out of captivity. And Pharaoh's puffed up and he said, I am Pharaoh. And he's all puffed up who he is and his status. So Moses comes in and he says, Pharaoh, let my people go. And, and, and Pharaoh's like, no. So a plague comes. You got the frog plague. You got the lice plague. You got the blood. You got the, the locust, um, the, 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 the darkness. I mean, they're just they're, the... And then the firstborn's dead. Finally, he goes, okay, I'll let you go. But he's still in that moment saying, I am Pharaoh, denying God for who he is. Because he didn't have faith in God. He had faith in himself to provide for himself, to do for himself, to provide for his family himself. Pharaoh's heart was hardened to God. He thought, I will take care of the situation. I can do it myself. But then they let him go. So they're traveling. And, and, and I think it was like 11 miles that they really had to go to get to Canaan land. It wasn't a long distance that they had to go to get to Canaan land. But for 40 years, they were in the desert. 40, I mean, 40 years. You can get around the world a time and a half in the time they would have traveled in that 40 years. Like just walking around the world. So can you imagine? I mean, I mean, I would have thought if I would walk around, I would have thought, you know, in, in, in 40 years in that spot in the desert, I would have thought after a while I would have recognized a few things. Like, wow, I think I've seen that before. I think I've seen that before. Wait a minute. You know, deja vu would have kicked in sooner or later. But it was because they were complaining, 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 grumbling, grumbling, lack of faith people. They're stuck there for 40 years. And I believe that's the place where the church is today. They're stuck in a place of grumbling and complaining about everybody else and not getting their own lives lined up and right and situated in God being the center of their life. They're complaining about everybody else. And I believe the church is in this 40-year slump or however many years we've been in it. And it's just now coming out of it. I believe that our generation, for some reason, we got lucky. I don't want to say lucky. We got privileged to bring out what is getting ready to come out in the things of God. I mean, we see the water now. The water is everywhere. It's not just Martinsville. It's not just Dawsonville. It's everywhere. Water is being proclaimed, and people are getting in the water and getting touched. They're still getting touched in the highways and the byways and the alders. But the water is something special that God is highlighting right now. And people are being moved. And there's pockets of fires blowing up everywhere. I mean everywhere. These pockets of fires are lighting up. Eventually, there's going to be a wind. And it's going to be in the right direction. And they're going to all come together. And it's just going to light this world up. And they're not, they're not going to know what's getting ready to hit them. Listen, you do not have to be fearful of the things to come. We need to be excited about the things that come that God has for you and for me. We've got to be excited. We've got to get in a moment of excited. I was so excited when I ministered to those boys out in the parking lot because I just ministered to someone earlier that day. I mean, I, I, was just, I was just excited. I mean, something in me is just like, man, I want to go do it some more. 
had other stuff I had to do. But man, I just wanted to do it some more. I wanted to go out and just talk to people. Tell them how much Jesus loves them. Whether they accept me or not, it didn't matter. You know, you're going to have people slam the door in your face. That's all right. When I went calling, when I had a bus ministry, I went calling. I would go knocking on doors every Saturday. And I would have people on the other side of the door say, we already know Jesus. I don't know who they thought I was. I said, well, they come out and talk to me about him. I'm serious. I've had guns pointed at me. I've had guns drawn on me. I mean, just knocking on doors telling people about Jesus. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen a lot in that. So, But I love it. I love it. I've not did that in Martinsville yet. Um, so if anyone wants to go door knocking, I, I love That's one of the one things I love doing is door knocking, bing, 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 and inviting them to a church. It doesn't matter what church they go to as long as they go to a faith-believing church. My point is today is that if Jesus is not center of your life, if he's not who you're aligned in, if you're aligned with your children, some people, some people are living their life through their children. They didn't get to ride the horses or all the stuff. I, I, I can name a bunch of things out. They didn't get to do all those things, so now they're living that through their children. Listen, our children are valuable, but they can't be most valuable. Our wives are valuable. Our husbands are valuable, but they can't be most valuable. Our jobs are valuable, and we must work as unto the Lord, but they can't be the most valuable thing in our lives. Because when those things are cut off, when that source is cut off, you will die. You will just die. I want to close with this. This is the Message Bible. This is the Message Bible, but it's Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. I love how it's worded. It says, my counsel for you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given, what you've learned. You've received Christ Jesus, if you have. The Master says, now live Him. Now live Him. If you don't know how to live Christ, read the Bible. Ask Holy Spirit. He'll show you how to live Him out in your everyday walk. It says you're deeply rooted in Him. If you are, this is what should be happening. You're well constructed upon him. So if you're deeply rooted, you're well constructed upon him. You know around the way of faith. You know all about faith and what it means to have faith. It's now do what you've been taught. All the stuff that you've learned. Like, like, some of you have been in church way longer than I have. Some of you have been lifers. And this is saying, school is out. Quit studying the subject and start living it. So school is out. Quit studying it and start living it. And let your living spill over into Thanksgiving. It's that simple. You've been taught. You know what to do. You know how to serve. You know how to give of your time. You know how to give of your money. You know how to give to people. You know how to spread the gospel. So when you come on Sunday morning, you get filled up. You bring an offering to the church, and you fill back up, and you go back out into the highways and byways, and you tell them what you heard the good news we should all be running out of this church saying good news good news good news he's alive he's alive good news he's alive we should run out of this church and tell the world there's good news because he's alive because he's alive we are alive and we can live eternally with him so I encourage you this morning to bring heaven down into your life. Bless those who are around you. Get outside of the four walls and minister to the lost and dying world. They're everywhere. There's people everywhere hurting. 
They just want to hear somebody, just like these two boys. They just want to hear somebody. I told them before I left, I said, I love you boys. And they said, I love you too. I meant it too. I love them. I fell right in love with them. The one boy has a call on his life. He's just running from them. They're just like 20 years old boys. I mean, they're just young boys. Already homeless and already lost. Why? Because they, they don't have fathers in their lives. Dads, there's a conference coming up, a men's conference. Sign up for it, please. Bring other men. We need to get our men. And we and I am so grateful for the men that we have in this house. I am so... Can we give an applause to the men in the house? Because, listen, I am so grateful for the men that we have in this house. Thank you, men, for showing up. Thank you for representing your families. But there's more to do. There's a conference coming up, and I know it's September, but it's going to come up on us quickly because the year's already getting over quickly. Um, sign up for it. Pastor Marty Derricott, David Edmondson, powerhouse, powerhouse preachers are going to be here. They're going to give fresh word. They're going to give something new. I'm expecting great things. Is there anybody here that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Remember tomorrow is the apocalypse. He could be coming. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I don't ever want to scare anybody into getting saved because I don't think it'd be effective. I scare you to get saved, you go right back out and do what you're doing the next day. And then you take on seven times the demons and then you're going to be in a worse shape. I don't even want to, I don't even want to do that. But is there anybody here that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior on the serious side? I don't want to walk away from a service knowing that, that you're lost. Because we don't know, really. We don't know. Again, I don't want to scare you into getting saved because if you come up here, I'm going to ask you a few questions. But we don't know. We don't know what tomorrow holds. I remember when I was bounty hunting, a young man, and I'm grateful, but a young man, uh, I hunted him down. And most of the time, I had 218 captures, and most of the time I got to pray with them pray with them and their families. I would take them because I knew some of them were going to go to prison, so I would take them to their families and uh, I would minister to them for four or five hours. I mean, there was times I had 18, 20 people in a circle praying for their loved one, getting ready to go to jail, and they're in cuffs, and here all these people are gathered around. And it probably was dangerous for me to do that, but, you know, I just felt the Lord's presence on every time. And But there's one, one individual young man, and, and man, I, my heart broke for him because he was just so lost in a uh, and he let me pray for him. And he said he knew Jesus. But there again, our fruits will let us know if we really truly know the King of kings and Lord of lords because our lives will change. There has to be fruit of change. There has to be fruit of change. And so this young man, I prayed for him and, and uh, I blessed him and took him to jail. He got out the next day and got murdered. And it broke my heart. Because if I would have just had one more moment with him, I, I would have I would have dug a little deeper. And I'm trusting that the Lord has him. Um, I don't know, but I'm trusting that he does. There are a few different incidences like that where the, the person I pray with was murdered the next day. I prayed with a young man at his home, and he was, uh, this was years before I was a bounty hunter, and I prayed for him in his home, and I thought we got some breakthrough, and that night he, uh, he started sniffing model glue, and it killed him dead found out the next morning I just I thought God if I would have spent just a, a little bit more time 
they're out there. There are people lost, and they just want you to say, hey, you're valuable. God loves you. Never let a moment slip out of your hand. And sometimes when you're in that moment, take an extra moment and just tell them how much that God loves them. And let them know you love them. Because if you love him, you'll love them. So is there anybody here that's not saved? Okay. We don't have to bow our heads because the bow says pray. Watch and, watch and pray. So, Father, we just thank you now for this group of people. You know their hearts, God. You know where they've been and what they're going through today. You know the trials, the struggles, the heaviness on their hearts, Lord. And we bless them this morning. We speak blessings over them this morning that, God, you would move in their life. That you would bring raises and bonuses and jobs and better jobs, houses. God, you want us to have all the great things in life. So I thank you for that this morning. The gentleman over here has gold and silver in his pocket. We just bless that gold and silver for all of us, all of, the, all of America, all of the world, to be rich in Christ. But he doesn't want us to be poor and down and out. He really does not want us to be poor and down and out. He wants us to be rich in him. But along with that, we can have all the things that heaven has for us. So I praise you, Father. I glorify you. I thank you for these people, Lord, and bless them as they go on their way. Come back Wednesday and pray with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Don't look too long at the